Okay, mixture is pumping up brick. And you have control. Yeah, I have control. Another step closer to proficiency in the steerman. Conducting an entire flight with Dennis hands off. So rush, man. I'm about flying this thing low. Including facing my first pavement landing. Uh, you want to try a wheel landing or how are you feeling? Alright, big super cub. Just a big Just super a cub. Big super cub. Where there's no margin for error in this rather intimidating airplane. I'm training to fly warbirds. This was a warm October day, and although windy, it was flyable. Dennis doesn't like to fly the Stearman in cold weather, because the big radial engine with exposed cylinders can't get up to operating temperature. Okay, here we go. Uh, backfire definitely wakes you up. Yeah, it's cold, eh? It's, uh, it doesn't do that as much in the warm summer days. Today's flight was going to be all about energy management and doing a power off glide. So no matter what you fly, you can probably relate to this one because it's all about spot landing and not adding power once you've committed to landing. So essentially we're doing a power off turn from downwind straight onto final. So it's like an arcing 180. I'm working toward getting signed off to fly the Stearman from the back seat. I didn't get to fly it as much as I hoped this summer because we produced a lot of other awesome stuff. So we've got a lot of variety of content coming. It's all thanks to supporters on Patreon and the sponsors. And seriously, the Flight Shop sponsors are giving away nearly $1,000 worth of stuff each month. So please check out the contest on the website. I love giving away stuff to viewers. Anyway, back to flying warbirds. Beyond the fact that they have a tailwheel, which makes them significantly harder to land and take off than a tricycle gear aircraft, you can't actually see where you're going in a lot of these airplanes. So the Stearman is a really good trainer because you can't see over the giant radial engine in the three-point attitude. It's really weird, and it really requires developing a, a new set of skills. Okay, I'm just going to do a bit of a turn, just I can't see what's in front of me. Yep, the more you turn, the more you can see, and the more other people can see you. Yep. We're on our way to Charlie's Field. It's a local grass strip with a 2,400-foot north-south oriented runway. The challenge, though, is that tall trees flank the threshold of the northern runway. So, I want to plan to come in above those trees and not try to go through it, would you? If you want to, sure. Flying is about making decisions, right? My plan is to do full stop landings, so I'm going to waste some runway aiming to land a little long to avoid the wind shear going through those trees. When we make bad decisions, we've got to use every ounce of luck and skill to fix it. If you make good decisions, the rest of it's usually easier. This is a really good day for illusions created by drift, though. I'm really working hard to stay coordinated because my brain is freaking out about the drift while I make this turn. Yep, that's pretty breezy out there. Yeah, okay, so, well, we're high now, so I'll... Uh, yeah. Power back, give her a shot. Yep. We're good, we're, that's so a lot of variables today with that wind, so. I got pushed a little further downwind on this one than I hoped, so I ended up facing the wind shear between the trees after all. Not much of a left crosswind, but you okay. do have one, that's so be aware. Yes, sir. All right, so I'm feeling like we, uh, the wind is a thing I should have factored in more. Yeah, but you're we'll good. See what happens. I think you're good. And keep and going your to that speed is good, your pitch is good, so don't let the pitch wander up and down. Hold the attitude, that way the speed variations will average themselves out. Yeah, I just think it's going to be lower than I wanted to going That's through these right. trees. Punch through it. All With right, well, extra speed, it'll, it'll... Oh my god, dude. So yeah, I added some power. Jesus. Ease her off, ease her off. Don't churn butter up there, just be gentle with it. The airplane will do what it's supposed to do if you do what you're supposed to do. That was good. <laughs> that was classic. Oh my God. A little bit of a, a little bit of a dog show getting here, but when it really counted, you did it perfectly. I saved it. Yeah, I was a little bit exactly. I was kind of freaking out for a second there, but I was like, no, oh, just fly the airplane, fly the airplane. Yep. So I, I added power to uh, fix that drop we got. Was that partly because I got slower? Or was that turbulence related? That was just turbulence. Well, I'm hoping the boys didn't do the last cut of the season, but it kind of looks like it. They uh, cut the grass and then that's going to be it. What, uh, a, what a beautiful day, though. Before takeoff, we debriefed that first landing. It's all in the attitude. Just hold the attitude. Sometimes the bottom will drop out on you, but, you know, very soon it comes back. So if you just kind of uh, intuitively hold the airplane in the attitude that you want it to be in, but uh, don't start churning butter. Okay, because every little bit of input that you create creates a crap load of drag. 
Yeah. And that's going to steal more energy. So if you are going to start doing that, you better add a little bit of throttle in, otherwise the bottom's going to drop out on you. Right, which is kind of what I did. So I added power and I stopped being in it. It, it. You reacted right. But as I said, you, you know, the reaction usually is the result of a bad decision. So. Yeah. Okay, so for this one, I'm going to try to not be as low coming through here, just to have a little bit more predictable wind current. Yeah. Okay, yeah, you leaned it for me, didn't you? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. i got to remember that after landing for taxi. you got to lean it. Feels on the floor. Ready to go? I'm ready. There we go. Gently in full power. Despite being gentle with the throttle, the engine was not loving the cold weather. Try lifting the tail up a bit this time once you get some speed going. Okay, so start neutral? Yeah. Push forward a bit, too. More than that, okay. Yeah, there you go. And you see, now when you pull, it'll cleanly come off the ground. Right. You don't get into that that gray zone in between flying and not flying. Got it. Yeah, you can't wish it into the air, eh? You gotta keep 60. Yep. Yeah. Don't go about 1350. Let's try and keep our experiment consistent. Yep. Okay, that cruise power is back about here. Okay, so I want to get closer, eh? Well, again, you won't know until you straighten it out, right? So when you're parallel to the field and wings level is the runway under your strut. Yeah, that's it there. It's right there. Perfect. Okay, I'll see it's good. There's the threshold. Power back. Yep. Try the turn. Feels so close to making that turn. Well. Uh, let's do it. And that backfire was cool, normal? Yeah, it usually happens if you punch the power in too quickly. The induction system in this and the way that it delivers fuel from the carburetor to the engine is actually quite interesting, but that's for another day. Yeah. I think you're getting slow. You can... There, that's Take good it. there. Speed? Yeah, you're good. Yeah, I'm trying to be higher this time. Yeah. So I can focus on landing without freaking out about the trees. Okay, so I'm like at that. Look at that, tail hill first, no, that was perfect. Oh, nice. Nice. Okay, power's back, stick back, gently on the brake. Man, with this thing, when you got it, like this thing really is stable if you let it be, right? Absolutely. The biggest enemy is the loose nut behind the wheel. Oh, love it. So this thing rewards you with doing things properly. I rolled six cameras on this flight and I really wanted clean audio of the engine so I could really monitor my power adjustments but there's almost nowhere to put a mic to not get wind noise in this open cockpit. So the one place I found that was sheltered was actually in the corner of the cockpit here, and I just used that camera to get a shot of my face. I really didn't have much interest in that angle. But when I was debriefing, I realized it was a good thing to examine because upon review, it showed me where I was looking, or more importantly, where I was not looking. There's your altitude. Everything is falling into place. Yeah, that's nice. For both takeoff and landing, it's important to fix your eyes kind of looking forward, but allow your brain to process the entire field of view. That uh, backfire definitely wakes you up. It's all about using your peripheral vision to make sure you're tracking straight along the runway, and also notice any slight altitude changes when you're landing or taking off. Looks really impressive in the dark, too. That's the one good thing about coming back late in the evening, you get these impressive looking flames coming out. I'd love to get into examining this stuff further, but I'm not a scientist. However, my friend Destin is one of my favorite YouTubers, and he produces some great science content, including lots of aerospace stuff. Now, he's a student pilot currently, and I'm trying to convince him to make a video examining the science behind peripheral vision when flying. So feel free to politely harass him to do it. Uh, not bad. I dropped on the wheel first, but... That was a wheelie, but it was nicely not over controlled. That was what I was really concentrating on, yeah. When you're touching down, try not to think that you're actually trying to change the pitch attitude so much as you're just trying to apply increasing amounts of back pressure. Right. You're just trying to raise, increase the back pressure, more back pressure, more back pressure. Yeah. At the right point, the right altitude above the ground, and then it'll always just nicely land in a three-point attitude. Um, yeah, so I'm cool. If I can get one more that doesn't suck, I'm cool to like, how are you yeah, over time? No, I'm good. I got no, I have no pressing schedule, so. Okay, so uh, neutral trim, rich mixture, stick back, and uh, here we go. All right.
So regarding where I'm not looking, after setting power, it's basically eyes out. I'm relaxing my eyes looking forward, using a piece of the cowling for reference, and then ignoring the central field of view, and it's all about peripheral to get the information that I'm tracking straight, and I just wait for the airplane to start to feel light and I know I'm ready to rotate. And same goes for landing, after I commit to the round out, I'm just looking straight ahead. So I'll try that same trick, I'll reduce power a little bit, nose down, and make the turn. Yeah. We're flying tight low circuits today, so to combat the wind drift, I'm lowering the nose and sharpening the turn and then resuming the climb on the downwind leg. So rush, man, I'm buff flying this thing low. Now this, this field combined with this airplane on a nice evening, man. Well, you know, if I live near here, I keep it here. This is where it belongs. Ah, uh, sweet. There we go. So I'll leave this one uncut from the forehead cam, which again is higher than my eye line, so I'm actually looking through that windscreen and basically seeing a cylinder in front of my face once I start rounding out. The cool thing is that ultimately this is not any different than anything I do in any other airplane, it's just that I can't see straight ahead. But I'm still staring straight ahead, which is exactly what I do in other airplanes. It's all about peripheral vision for this last bit of landing. There you go, just milk it out. Milk it out, there you go. Oh, yeah, nice. there you Back. Oh man, that's sweet. I was happy to have done most of this flight myself, and I really didn't plan to face the pavement landing, so I just wanted to sit back and enjoy the rest of this flight. Alright, you have control. I'm just going to enjoy the view for a minute. Sure. You got her. Okay. Oh, that's awesome, man. Thanks a lot. A pretty day. Oh, I should at least do one little uh, hammerhead, I think. That never hurts. But Dennis had other plans and he wasn't going to let me off the hook that easy. Pavement landing is the true test because you have to be precise and you cannot have any side load on touchdown. So the steerman demands precision. All the fundamentals in this thing apply to every other airplane, it's just less forgiving. That is awesome. Anyway, we got to get back before the evening temperature starts to set in. Awesome airplane, man. So even in that short little flight, we went from, uh, my temperature gauge went from about uh, 52 to almost 60, just from flying straight level for a while with the mixture leaned back. Yeah, now they're steering function of forms over at the field for the mid-right downwind streak there. That's a good point. Have we, have we run it enough to burn off the water? Well, there is a peak. It's just not going to get any hotter than that. The only way to make it hotter is to run it at high power and lean while climbing yeah. to keep the airspeed low so that the cylinders don't cool down. But Radial engines are perpetually running cold. There's nothing you can do about it. Right. Uh, you want to try a wheel landing, or how are you feeling? Uh, Honestly, I wasn't sure. If you're feeling like you want to let me try, I got it. You got it. What's my profile going to be? It's going to be uh, a little bit faster, about 10 knots faster than you normally would, and with a little bit of power, same as you did with the Super Cub. Yep, so power where it is kind of thing? Yep. And I want to go for this speed of mass, 70-ish? Yeah, you're good. Maybe a little more nose down, and then as you round out, you might want to use the kilo, clear the active. Might want to add a little power just to give you a little flatter approach. Bust in for him, short final three two. All right, big super cub, just a big just super a cub. Big super cub. Keep your heels on the floor. They are on the floor. Keep your eyes off in the distance. Don't crane your neck. No, nope, not moving my head at all. All right, let's gonna fly this thing. Get the runway. Yeah. I'm trying so hard for minimal descent rate and zero side load here. Damn it. What the cameras didn't do well was capture that little bit of sync we got there at the last minute. But I didn't panic. I kept the stick neutral and added some power and continued staring straight ahead. Damn it. Ah, oh, come oh, on. That's firm, but that's good. Uh, what I didn't want to have happen with that sink at the last minute that did happen. Pull the power back. <laughs> but I got sort of fixated on tracking straight and working on the rudder that I forgot to remove the power that I added. So the tail was never going to come down if Dennis hadn't reminded me to pull the power back to idle. Uh, that was good. Alright, well thanks for letting me try it. I didn't necessarily have the confidence getting into it, but once I was on final I just got myself back into zone. You gotta do it. I do it sometimes. So this one was a bunch of editing, but it was really fun to debrief. And thanks a lot to the supporters on Patreon and the sponsors for allowing me to take the time to do it. And please check out flightchops.com to enter the contest. There's a lot of stuff being given away each month. And as always, keep your flight chops sharp. One problem is when you land on pavement, especially if you don't land uh, firmly, which you, you managed to do, oh, I sure did. Uh, the one struggle hang up. 
and then the uh, airplane will kind of taxi a little bit cockeyed. So it's really important in a crosswind to get that upward wheel down first so that if it does sit cockeyed, it's at least cockeyed the right way.